Good morning. Good day, good people. Woo! Child. Trying to get my whole little self together. <laughs> my whole self. I'm trying to get it together. Just sat down, just got in the room. So come on in the room. Let's have this conversation. Let's have this conversation. Good morning, good evening, good day. Hello to my Facebook fam, to my YouTube fam, my soon to be Instagram and TikTok fam and wherever else it is that God wants to send me. <laughs> Amen. Welcome, it's your girl. All right, let's get this bun together. It's your sister, your auntie, you know, whatever you wanna call me. What's happening with my bun? It was cute this morning. I don't know what's happening to it now, but anyway, we're going right on, child. Anyway, honey, don't let that distract you. Woo, let's pray. Let's pray. Father, 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 we thank you. We love you, honor, and adore you. You are good. You are amazing. You are an awesome Father, and we give you praise. We just magnify your name, Lord God, and we thank you for this is the day that you have made, and we make a choice to rejoice and be glad in it. Woo! God, I ask that you would bless this time um, as we sit with you this morning. I pray, Father God, that your word will that your word will penetrate our hearts, that you would speak to us, Holy Spirit. I pray that you will give us revelation and insight. Help us to see. Uh, things that we've never seen before. Help us to be open to change, open to growth, open to um, um, being pruned and processed and made anew. Uh, uh, every relationship requires growth. And so, God, we pray that we would not we will not be afraid of growth, that we will not stifle our own growth. We, we pray that we will embrace uh, what you're doing in our lives in this season. So, Father, I pray for every person that is going to uh, join this live this morning and those that will watch the replay. I pray, Father, that there is a word for them. Hallelujah. I pray that there is a word for them, that those that hear the word and receive the word in their heart and purposely, intentionally walk it out in their life, they will see fruit. They will see fruit. Hallelujah. And so I give you praise, honor, and glory for all that you're doing, all that you're going to do. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Um, Sharon, I don't know if you're able to, but if you are, if you're able to find the scripture where it talks about... Um, um, sharing your burdens like sharing your burdens with your friend you know with the your burdens with one another um oh i think i found it galatians 6 2 galatians 6 2 that's the scripture that just came into my head um mm -hmm. Galatians 6 2. I hope I don't use it out of context, but um okay, so the scripture says carry each other's burdens, and then this way you fulfill the law of Christ. Bear one another's burdens, share each other's burdens. Okay. Um oh you obey the law of Christ when you offer each other a helping hand. Okay. The International Standard Version says, practice carrying each other's burdens. That's good. That's good. Practice carrying each other's burdens. Um, so on Monday, um, we, we talked about me. I mean, we do so often, but we really talked about me on Monday. 
um, the Holy Spirit. Um, I was praying and asking him, what is it that you want me want to talk about? What is the conversation you want to talk about today? And I've said this before, but many times, at least in, in this season, but many times the way that God uses me in my ministry and the call of God on my life <clears throat> is I have these conversations with God all the time. And what has happened over the last three years is the conversations that God and I have, he has now added you all to the mix. So you get to hear me think out loud in reference to the conversations and talks and even the right now moments that God and I share. And so sometimes it could be something that I'm personally going through, like this situation um, that we've been talking about, how to be a friend as an adult. Because that looks very different than when you are kids. It looks very different when, than when you were teenagers, right? It looks very different even in your 20s and your 30s. I am 51 years old. And so um, I would say that most of my friends are around that age, either 10 years out, either way, 10, 15 years out, either way, right? So my friends are ranging between the ages of 35-ish, 40 to, you know, 65, you know, 60-ish, 65. And something that I something that I have learned about myself is that I am an introspective person. I've always been that way. I see things here, but I will bring them here. I will bring them inward so that I can process it and see how am I functioning in that area, right? And so uh, this past Monday, you know, in my quiet time with the Lord, I was like, God, oh, what are we going to talk about today? It's Monday. It's a new week. Let's go. Let's get it. And he was like, we're going to talk about what you and your sister uh, discussed yesterday. And I was like, no, no, no. I mean, like, what are we going to talk about? <laughs> Basically, no, I don't want to talk about that. <laughs> Let me pull my camera down a little bit. I was like, basically, no, God, I don't want to talk about that. What are we going to talk about? We, we, we got to be talking about something else because I know you don't want me to talk about what she and I went through. And he said, yes, I do. And, 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 and I believe I read something by the CDC. Uh, I do a lot of reading and YouTubing. And I was reading something um, as it relates to loneliness and um you know, just just trying to live life. And something that I, I read, it said, read it or heard it, it said that loneliness is the number one issue in the world right now. It is bigger than uh, smoking, drinking. And I literally like blink like what loneliness and it's so crazy because if you think about it we have so many things going on like you have facebook you have instagram you have tiktok you know youtube all of the things that i was talking about earlier hey to all of these people yet people are still lonely they still feel alone and it just got me to thinking, you know, when, when he said to me, Jacina, I want you to have these hard conversations. And I want you to have these hard conversations because they are not being had. And a lot of people are losing friends that they should not be losing because they don't know how to move according to the season of that friendship. There are people, granted, you're going to have people in your life that, you know, they're seasonal. I can think about some people right now. Um, y'all, hold on. Let me turn my heat on. Y'all know how I had a hot flash. It's cold, hot, one minute. Yeah, I'm going through all of that. <laughs> there are some 
some people that come into your life i think about my high school friends i could tell you my high school best friend's name right now i dun dun i have not seen her nor talked to her in the in the way that we hung out in high school since high school when i left to go to college that friendship it just kind of like dissipated and i haven't seen her in over i know 20 years i graduated from high school in 1990 i have not seen her i believe since the 90s <laughs> seen her on facebook you know i've said hello whatever but that friendship never came back to where it was those are seasonal relationships i understand that there's no love lost there if i see her tomorrow i will hug her i will love on her and and it will be that one of the thing, one of the nuggets that i want to remind you of as we get ready to dive into the second part of um my current friendship situation is um, I want you to know that relationships are seasonal. That, that season can be, people can come into your life for a reason, a season, or a lifetime. And I think a lot of times we're looking for people to be in our life for an extended period of time when that may not be the purpose of that relationship someone simply could come into your life for god to to show to teach you a lesson through that person that lesson can be a blessing or it could be something that requires your growth it requires your attention it it, it requires you to to go under i call it the transformation life a knife where you have to be processed and pruned so that you can be a better person on the other side of that all relationships are not meant to stay and if we it one of the things that here's another nugget one of the things that I'm learning to do is I am learning to ask God about people that come into my life and I am quick to say one of my former pastors pastor Marvin Jackson taught us this he stated when you pray when you're in relationships with someone you connect with someone you ask God to expose reveal and remove now I kind of added a little bit more to this but basically I'll say God please expose reveal and remove anyone or anything that's in my life that is not connected to your divine will and purpose for my life that's what I pray. It wasn't all of that, but that's pretty much what he was saying when he taught us that. I need you to expose, reveal, and remove. And then I add to that, and if if I can't do it in my own strength, God, you do it for me. Like if I can't move on or whatever the case it is, if I if I'm not able to do what I need to do, give me strength, give me the withal, give me insight, give me wisdom, give me what I need in order to do what I need to do so that I can become who I need to become. Because sometimes God will reveal things and will ignore the things that he reveals he'll expose it but we won't do anything about the exposure so it's 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 like you you and i especially if you are a believer that's watching this you and i have to lean on the holy ghost he is he is our helper he he is our friend he is our standby he is everything that we need and when we don't consult him, when we don't look to him, when we don't ask him, this is, I believe, and not just that, but then obey. This is when we find ourselves in hot water. This is when we find ourselves in situations with people that we look up and go, I mean, how did I even get, 
because you didn't consult me and then you didn't obey me when I gave you instructions. That's just the bottom line. We've all we've all dealt with it. We've all experienced it. We've all experienced relationships that God has told us, I did not tell you to get that close. I can I can specifically remember a person that I was dating and <laughs> it didn't work out well. And I went to God crying about it, you know, as we do. And the Holy Spirit said to me, I never told you to date him. Child, y'all ain't ready for the truth because y'all like to play around. But I'm not here to play no games with nobody. Because your soul, listen, your soul is at stake when it comes to relationships. <laughs> here I'm trying to date this guy. And God said, you were just supposed to show your light. You was you were supposed to be a friend. That's it. And and when I say not even a friend, I heard you. I got you. Ooh, honey, he was like, I did not tell you that. <laughs> you are supposed to be an acquaintance. That means we connect in some way, but we're not close enough. See, this is why. Forgive me, y'all, if I cut my thoughts off. That just means another more. Uh, another power thought interrupted that thought we got to get these positions right if you've never read relational intelligence by um, dr. Darius Daniels do yourself a favor and read it do yourself a whole favor and read it and the reason I'm sharing that with you is because a lot of time oh Jesus I yes a lot of times we try to find answers in ourselves. Like he is the answer and he lives here, right? But God has also placed his word. He's also placed information, nuggets, gems in the heart and the mind of other men and women that he has created that will add to what he's already spoken in his word. God understands that we live in the earth. He understands that in addition to him, notice I didn't say we replace him with these things. In addition to what God is already speaking, what God has already said concerning different areas of our life. He has allowed people to pin things. He's allowed people like myself to be able to speak things. He's allowed people to create things that you can actually watch, you know, like on YouTube or a movie or document, whatever it is. And guess what? He's given people testimonies, experiences, that turn into testimonies to be able to share with others. Listen, you this is this is how you can be better. Some of those people are therapists, they're counselors, they're life coaches, they're doctors, they're here, they're 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 apostles, they're they're teachers, they're pre he's God has created everything that we need if we would just seek him out. That's why he says in Jeremiah 29, 12, and 13, because we know 11 so well. But I need you to pass by. I need you to see 11 and keep reading. 12 and 13 tell you that whenever you seek him with all of your heart, listen to me, when you seek him with all your heart, he said, you'll find me. When you come looking for me, like for real, for real, you serious about looking for me? You're serious about seeking me? <clears throat> You will find me. Some of us are not serious about seeking him. That's why we haven't found him yet. You know, you 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 just going in like peekaboo, God. Like this ain't no peekaboo, honey. I need you to want. I need you to come in here and want me. I need you to want this relationship. When I see that this is your top priority, that you're serious about me. Oh man, I'm coming out with. I'm I'm coming out with. Everything that you need for the season that you're in. Sharon, that's Jeremiah 11, 
verses 12 and 13. 11 verses 12 and 13. Thank you, boo. So, that's the intro. Let me get into the second phase of the conversation between me and my sister. So, I can't really remember everything. Um, I can't remember everything that I um, said on Monday. So, I'm just going to try to pick up from you know, where, where the Lord wants me to go today. So, my friend came over. Remember, I think I left off on Monday talking about my friend um, and how when we had the text conversation, I, Angela, you was on my mind. Girl, look at God. When I say you was on my mind and, and, my, and my heart was to hit the share button or to tag you in, and I just couldn't do it all trying to get on and get going god is god you good let me tell you something I, I, and, and let me just just let me just drop this nugget when you are on the mind of god he'll make sure that you get what you need listen to me god will make sure you get what you need i'm telling you i was thinking about her this morning as soon as i went live i heard angela tag angela but I was trying to get going. And God was saying, mm -mm, I love her so much. That's okay, let me tell her. When I say God don't play about us, he don't play about us. I declare I'm his favorite. But I believe you might have a little, you know, you might have a little room in there too. It's, all, it's room for all of us. <laughs> he wants you to know how much he loves you. And as we're talking about this topic, he also, listen, I believe that when I, when, when I or anybody else, because I do it too, I'll see somebody on Facebook, I've never seen them before, and I'll say, oh, let me see what they're saying, and it'd be exactly what I need. That's God, to me, it's like that's God loving us in a, in, you know, he's loving on us through that. He's saying, I got you. Amen. So let, let, let's dive into this thing. Let me try to do a quick recap. I reached out to a friend of mine who I've known for many years now, at least 10 years, I think. We used to go to church together. Reached out to her um, because I hadn't seen her. Um, I thought it was since my birthday party, but it actually, my birthday party was actually not the last time I saw her. I actually saw her at another friend's event that we attended okay so it was later than my birthday party it was like around I think April ish of last last year something like that but anyway that's not that's not important so let me keep moving I reached out to her a couple weeks ago and when I reached out to her I could feel something was off when you are in relationship you can feel when something is off you don't have to talk to people every day. You don't have to see them all the time. To me, if you have a real, authentic relationship, the way that that person says a thing, the way that that person does a thing, the way that they move, the way that they respond to certain things, you can tell mm, something's not right. You can just tell. And so when she responded to my text message, I immediately knew something wasn't right i knew it was and i said uh-uh uh-oh so i began to you know correspond with her via text and basically long story short she basically was saying i am hurt because we have not spoken we haven't talked we haven't gotten together in a while. Now, now let me say this. Because I saw her, because Holy Spirit is making, making me highlight this point. Just because I saw her at another friend's event. Notice, I hadn't seen her since my birthday. That was an event. So that means there were other people that I would have had to interact with. Even though she was there. She was not the focus of my attention. Oh, I hear you, God. She wasn't the focus of my attention. 
right? Because I, I was loving on many people that night. At my friend's event, although we, we sat with each other, she was not the focus because now we're at an event where other people are talking and so we're having to listen. So we only had a little bit of sister time. Okay. So when she said, hey, you know, we say we're going to get together all the time, but we never do. Right then. Right then, I had to be in a position to be able to hear that. And I'm going to be 100% honest with y'all. Hold on a minute. Y'all going to hear my voice, but just, let me just turn it down. Let me be 100% honest. I think sometimes we get so caught up in life that we're not cognizant, aware of what's happening in our lives. Does that make sense? I don't know if that makes sense. I want to drop this nugget in here, right here. Because I want this nugget to sit with you as we have this conversation today. And we're going to talk about this until the, until to the Lord, until I feel like the Lord says, okay, that's enough. Because we don't talk about it enough. Being a friend is a lot of work. A friend. I'm not talking about an acquaintance. I'm not talking about, you know, hey, hey, how you doing? All right. It's good to see you. How's the family? No, no, no. A friend. The Bible say a friend sticks closer than a brother. When you say that a person is your friend, there's some accountability to that and so and a great responsibility that comes with that. It's weight on that. This is why I don't use the word friend all the time. I'll say my sister. S I S T A. That means she is she is in my my larger circle. I always think about Jesus and I think he had like the 72 or something. Then he had the 12, and then he had the 3. We know Jesus was the bomb. Jesus was smart. <laughs> Jesus was so smart. He was like, look, I got these people. You know, they're, they're in my outer circle, but we good. You know, I can be there for this individual in certain ways. But my 12, I'm there for them in a more definitive way but my three oh i'm there and even that looks different depending on the type of relationship that you have let me say that again i think a lot of times we're looking to people and we say friend but they don't know what that means this is why I said it has to be a conversation. It's got to be a conversation. It's got to be. I believe that our relationships are suffering because we have not had the necessary conversations that need to be had. We are not having conversations to identify who are we and what are we able to to bring to the table because you and I we could have a different viewpoint perspective of what a friend is and if we never talk about it listen to me honey if we never talk about it sis sir if we never talk about it I could be looking for you to give me something that you don't even have to give me you could be looking for me to be something that I'm not. I, I was in one season, but I can't give you that in this season. Do you understand what I'm saying? And I know that that's why many of us are having a difficult time. Because we have expectations of people in our lives that they are not able to provide. It's not that they don't want to. 
I believe that there are people that are gifted to be certain things. Like, when I think of my three friends that's in my closest circle, Lillian, Sonia, and Tara, those three people, they all give me something different. And I look to all, oh, now this is a whole nother conversation now. This is a whole nother conversation. Where are you taking me at, Daddy? Not only do all three of them, do we have a different relationship, there are different needs that I have for each of them. And I am something different for each of them. At least they are for me. When me and my sister decided to meet up, I sent her an evite. You know how you get the evite for somebody's, you know, birthday party or some type of event? I sent her an evite. The reason I sent her an evite after our conversation was because I wanted her to know, no, I'm for real. I know we said we're going to meet on Sunday at 3, but no, for real, for real. I want you to know that I am serious about this and I'm looking forward to meeting with you. I don't know what all is going to take place, but I'm looking forward to it, whatever it is. Why? Because she is my friend. So, we decided the date and the time, and we met. Now, when she first got there, I could tell she was a little guarded. I'm a people watcher. I'm a people person and a people watcher. I went to school for communications. So I've studied it. Now this has been some time I could probably use. I know I could use a refresher. But I study people. I'm a teacher for heaven's sake. So I'm always looking at people. I'm looking at your body language. I'm also listening to what you're saying. And I'm also following my, you know, what we call intuition or the discernment. All right, don't get don't get all worked up. Discernment, whatever. All right. So I'm looking at her and I can tell that when she, you know, she gets out of her car as we approach it the each other, she's she's like, "Hey," but I can feel I can feel it. I can feel like, uh, ah, something something's right there. I can't really connect to her, but she's here." Let me tell you something. That's four volumes to me. Let me tell you, let me say, let me drop this nugget. Let me, I'm dropping another nugget. If you know that you and your friend have something going on or you're not sure what's going on, set a meet up. Set a time to meet up. Do not try to do this stuff over the phone. Do not. If you value that friendship and, and you all are able to physically meet, that would be the first that would be the first thing that I recommend that you do. Meet in person. Do not meet at a restaurant. Do not. You need to meet somewhere where it is quiet and where the two of you can talk and be heard. Both of you need to be heard and both of you need to talk. And you don't need all this outside stimuli. You don't need all these distractions because your attention needs to be on each other. What I would say hindsight, this is why I believe God is having me have this conversation. What I would do hindsight is I would have been a little bit more prayerful before we met. I prayed as I was coming home and, and you know, getting ready to meet her. I prayed real quick, but I didn't sit with that thing like I should have. I think had I sat with, a, sat with it, I, I, I believe that God would have positioned my heart to be able to not just receive some things, but be aware of some things as we were talking and connecting. Does that make sense? Um, so set up a meeting. Set up a time to meet up where it's just the two of you. If you have kids, you need to leave the kid, find somebody to watch them babies for a little minute. You don't need no distractions. It needs to be you and that person and the both of you need to speak. One person cannot dominate the conversation. The two of you have to speak. Secondly, 
I would say pray before the meeting occurs. You want to spend time with the Father. And if you know how to pray in tongues, I would definitely pray in tongues. I would spend several days leading up, especially if you guys schedule it, you know, some time off. Like that was, I believe, a Saturday or it was the week before. So I had at least, you know, four or five days, six, seven days or whatever it was to pray. I would say spend some time every day. Call out that person's name, Rosa, Shiketu, Robo, Bosha, and then begin to pray. Because you just praying the words that you know, you know, praying as we usually pray. You only know so much to say and so much to ask. When you pray in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Ghost, as, as we know, and if you don't know, that's okay. He prays on our behalf. So the Holy Ghost begins to intercede. The Holy Ghost begins to do things and reveal things and straighten things and, and line things up that you don't even have in, you don't even know anything about. You don't know nothing about. He could listen. Another thing that the Holy Spirit has been teaching me is when I involve him, haha, she, la When I involve him, he goes before me. My friend, my friend sent me a scripture, and then I heard John Hannah say it this morning doing 4 a.m. prayer. I know that I'm hearing from God. And as I hear, let me tell you something. I love people so much and what God has called me to do. I don't want to be the only one that's growing and developing in this area. And that's having, you know, that's that's working on having healthy relationships with him, with myself, and then with others. I want you to also. I could just sit right over here and just, just thank God for, you know, repairing and restoring me and my friend's relationship and move on about my business but God said no you don't listen you don't win by yourself I didn't give you that victory Jesus I didn't give you that victory just for you I gave you that victory so you could tell others I want you to win I want all of us to win Set up a meeting. Go alone. Go prepared. So before to go prepared, set up a meeting. Spend time with God in, in the word and in prayer. Go alone. Prepare. So what do I mean by prepare? Prepare, with, prepare to go alone, but also... If you know, like if you know why you're meeting, like if something happened and you know why you're meeting, we're meeting because she said something or my friend did something or, you know, whatever the case may be. Sit and prepare your thoughts. It's very similar to the nugget that I gave the, the other Friday when, when we first started this, have, how to have a hard conversation. Think, sit think and write write out what's currently going on what you think may be going on what you can discern is going on write it down the reason that you're writing these things down is you're writing them down so that you can be aware i feel like many times the enemy he he you know he comes in and catches us off guard because we do not prepare properly. This is why the Bible tells us all the time to put on the full armor of God. When? Every day. God don't ever tell you to just go out into the day. Scoon out there. See what's going to be. God be like, you better. I don't care how busy your morning is. I don't care what you got to do. But you better find you a few minutes of quiet time with me. Sit with me. Invite me into your day so that I can order your steps. Invite me into your day. So whatever it is that you have to face today, I'm, listen, I'm going to go ahead of you and clear the way. Then 
I'm listen. I told you, God goes ahead, then He's with us all at the same time. He said, I'm going to go ahead and clear the way, but then I'm going to back that thing up. And I'm going to be right there with you as you walk out the day. And then I'm going to be behind you, and I'm going to cover you as you go. This is why you, have you ever noticed, have you ever noticed that when you read about putting on the full armor of God, there is nothing on their back. Nothing is on the back. And I was saying to myself, well, how you ain't going to have nothing on your back? You need to have some kind of place, some kind of shield, something for your back. God like, no, nah, I got your back. I got you. I got you. When you go and you have these hard conversations, and I'm telling you, I've said it before, you go and you go by yourself, you in trouble. The enemy is looking for a million and one ways to distract you, a million and one ways to throw some, some junk up in there that you're not prepared for. You got to pray. You got to pray. You got to pray. And then you got to plan and prepare. That was the one thing that I did not do. So when I met with my friend, a lot of stuff she was saying, it just took me off guard. I was like, wait, what? What do you, what do you mean? I wasn't prepared. I did not take time to pray about it. I thought in my own intellect, well, whatever, you know, we just go meet. She want to meet. I, I was not aware that it was deeper than that. But had I spent time with the Holy Ghost, he would have told me. He might have not have told me what it was, but he would have prepared my heart to receive what she was going to say. Because I wasn't ready. I wasn't ready. And I'm grateful that in my walk, where I am in my walk with God, my desire to have strong relationships, strong relationship with him, strong relationship with myself, and strong relationship with others, when God begins to speak things to me, I, I, I hear him now and I listen with an open heart and an open mind. Remember on last Friday we talked about you got to stop putting God in a box. You got to learn to be open. We want to tell God the problem. Then we want to tell him how to solve it, when to solve it, who to involve with the solving. You know, we we want to tell him all the things. And he's like, all I told you was to cast your cares upon me. That's all I told you to do. All I told you was not to be anxious, to pray about it, give me th thanks, and then go on over there and sit down somewhere. I ain't told you to try to work it out. Because while you try while you try to tell me how to work it out, it's already been worked out. We get in the way when we want to dictate to God how to solve the problem. I believe it's rebellion. It's a spirit of rebellion. It's the spirit of witchcraft. We want to try to tell God how he ought to listen to us. The one that's got the problem. <laughs> now make it make sense for me. Make it, come on. The next thing that I want you to do. Is I want you to. After you've written everything down. The purpose of writing those things down. Is to get it out of here. And to get it out. I have been. And I'm going to do a little bit more research on it. But. I don't know what it is, but besides my 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 love for Bibles all of a sudden, just different types of Bibles. I'm in love with Bibles. I want every kind. Right now I want the you know the Hebrew Bible. Talking to my brother Emmanuel. Now he done got me all. I mean, I'm excited about it. I want one. Then, you know, I want the ESV. Um, journaling study Bible because I like to write in my Bible I like to take notes it's just too many Bibles <laughs> anyway besides that it's almost like God has been I keep hearing journaling every time I look at something or anything somebody's either journaling 
or I hear the word journaling or somebody I'll be watching someone and they'll talk about journaling. I'm like, what is all this journaling? And when I was a little girl, I had a journal. I had a diary. I wrote in that thing every day. I loved it. But now because we use these digital devices, it's like I don't I don't journal at all cuz I don't like my handwriting. And so God is literally as I'm thinking, as I'm talking and processing and speaking, I can see how the Holy Spirit had been ministering to me about a year ago about writing more. Like I used to didn't even take notes when I went to church. I didn't take notes. I didn't write them. I typed them in my phone because he got on me about taking notes and not looking over them when I got home. Mm -hmm. And you too. He he said, you, you why are you taking these notes? You don't never go back to them. So why are you taking them? What you trying to look studious? What are you doing? What is the purpose of it? It wasn't it wasn't the right purpose, right? Because I'm taking them, but I'm not doing anything with them. I had tons of them. 10, 15 of them, them um, notebooks, just notes from, from sitting under the word, but never reading it. Ooh, that's a whole other message right there. And I'm not going to go there today just for the sake of time. Aren't you glad? <laughs> I'm going to let him hit you right there all by yourself. But it's like he's been saying, journal, journal, write, write. Now, at first, I had a voice recorder, and I would journal that way. I would speak it. But it's like lately he's saying, no, I need you to write it. And I'm like, oh, you know why? I, be I just believe it's something with that writing. I believe that there's something happening when you write. Because he's bringing it back up again, even in this conversation. You need to sit and you need to write out these thoughts. And the reason why I believe he's saying write these out is because it gives your mind the opportunity to release what you're thinking and to see it on paper, but also to get it out of you. I feel like a lot of times we house so much in our heads that when we do interact with people, that some, I don't know how, but it comes out. We, we, we project it onto other people and we probably don't even realize it. But because we're not dealing with it internally, I mean, we're not, we're only dealing with it, excuse me, internally. When we do open up our mouth, when we do say something, whew. so even even in that, before you have the hard conversation, sit down and write your stuff out. What it'll also do is it'll get your emotions and it'll bring them right on down. It'll level your emotions. If you have all that stuff in you and then you get ready to have a conversation with someone, I'm going to tell you what's mostly coming out. I believe 80 to 90% of a lot of our conversations are emotional. This is why they end up, you know, on the wrong foot you it I just wanted to talk but now you now y'all arguing or you're not you, or it, it just did not go the way that you wanted it to go it didn't end well so it doesn't always have to be an argument it could just be it did not end well you went in with the mindset of you know I want this to work I want to say what I need to say but it didn't end well because you were not prepared. You cannot go into a hard conversation unprepared. You're not little kids anymore. We're not little kids anymore. Little kids will go in, when well, you when well, you was talking to Johnny and 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 you act like you didn't even see me. What's the root cause? I felt neglected. I felt like you didn't see me. I heard you. Thank you. God says when you do that, when you write, when you sit and you think and you write and you process, that's what that writing is going to do. It's going to help you process those emotions. It's going to help you process those feelings. When you sit and you do that, you will start to see the underlining 
issue. And we're going to talk about part three. I hope it ain't too many parts to this. But <laughs> we're going to talk about part three. We're going to get into the actual conversation on Friday. I'm just giving you some pre-nuggets of what I noticed that I didn't do, that I should have done. And what I will do in the future. So, if when you write things down, you're able to see them for what they are. Because when they're up here, honey, listen, again, this is the battleground for the enemy. The enemy knows that if you keep it up here, he got access to every other part of your body. Then it causes you not to function well. Let me tell you something. When you keep that stuff up here in your head, guess what? The enemy has the op. Let me tell you what he's going to do. He's going to start telling you things that's going to make you doubt. That's going to make you, um, he's going to, he's going to. He's going to point fingers. He's going to he's going to spit lies. He's going to even say this is what they're thinking or saying or feeling or doing and that's not even what they're doing. But because you have housed these thoughts in your head, you have listen, you have kept these emotions bound. And you have not set them free. Your body can only take so much. This is why people, I believe this is why people are overweight. Because they're carrying too much weight. They're carrying weight in the natural, which causes them to carry it in the in the physical, in the um in the spirit. They're carrying too much weight in the spirit realm, which causes them to carry the weight in the natural realm. I believe this is why people got sicknesses. Because they keeping that stuff in them instead of getting it out your first line of defense is prayer go to the father your second line of defense is get that crap out of your head get it out of your heart and get it on get it out get it on paper another thing you could do is go for a walk this is something that i've got to i've got to get back into my routine Lillian and I used to go for bike rides and walks all the time. When I tell you I felt like a million bucks that year, two years, I felt like a million bucks. I had more energy. My mind was clearer. I felt better. I just overall felt good. Even though we were dealing with the pandemic, I felt good in my body. And I believe that I was able to fight off things and fight through things and stand in things in a way that I didn't before just because I was exercising. I know it sounds crazy, but let me tell you, it's the fact. It's fast. You just take you a little walk, and it ain't got to be at, at a park and all of this. Sometimes you can't do all of that. Just walk around your neighborhood. Just take a little walk. I need to start doing that at work. Just taking a little walk. Just go down there in the parking lot. Take me a couple laps. Come on back. Take a walk and talk. Take Talk to God. Take a walk and talk to God. Go sit by the water. That's another place you could go. Go sit by the water. Take your journal. Take a notebook. It ain't got to be a journal. Take, take some paper and a pen and write. And don't try to correct it. Just write. Just write. Whatever comes to your mind. Whatever. Write. 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 It's no right way to do it. Wrong way to do it. You're just trying to get all of that out. You're trying to give it a bigger space. Which is out of you. Write. Then once you write it, read it. Read what it's saying. Read it. You'll be amazed at what you lodging in your head. And then you take it and you, all right, I, I read it, all right, all right, that's it, that's it for that. And then if you feel led to right now, what steps am I going to take now? Now that I'm aware of all of this stuff that I have been holding in, what steps am I going to take now to make sure that I am in control of this foolishness? I'm going to tell you something. Oftentimes, it will help you. I, I hear you. I believe doing that is going to help you channel your thoughts to have the conversation that needs to be had. 
Because I'm telling you, a lot of times when we have these hard conversations, when we have these meetups, we go in with all of that stuff here, all of that stuff here. You got stuff on your in your head, you got stuff on your heart, and then you're gonna go have what kind of what kind of what kind of conversation do you think you was gonna have? What kind? Last nugget, and then we out. I want you to also make sure that you go in and you're honest about how you feel. This is why you need to write this stuff down. Because, thank you. One of the other things that you want to write down, once you get through with the purging, because that's what you're doing. You're purging what you've been thinking about. You're purging what you've been feeling. Once you get that on paper and you get that out of you, and then you take the next step, you take the time to ask yourself questions. Why am I feeling like this? What, what made me feel like this? Now, what in scripture can I do about this? So those will be the three things. That's good. That's good. Why am I feeling like this? What made me feel like this? Is it something someone said? Who was the someone? Was it the individual? Was it an outside person? Was it something that I read? Was it something that I watched? Is it something that I'm currently reading or watching? Is it, is it something that the enemy has said? Is it, is it some little whisper that he, he done spoke in my ear that's got me seeing this person differently from who they are? Baby, don't... When I tell you we're going to get it together, we are going to get it together. It's time out. There is no darn way that we should be believers walking around here with dysfunctional relationships when we got a helper that lives on the inside of us. It just shouldn't be. If our stuff is jacked up, it's because we are not using our help. We're not seeking the Father. We're not using our help. And we're not walking in the way that he said. How are we thinking we're going to get what God said doing contrary to what he has spoken? I'm telling you right now. Close, out, close it out, Jay. Close it out. Close it out. When we do it God's way, we get God's results. When we do it our way, we get our results. So, whose results do you want? I'm talking to myself. Alright, so you're going to get these, writing them down, because <clears throat> this is a part of your planning and preparing for the conversation. Guess what you'll also find? As you're writing this stuff down, you'll start seeing, number one, you'll start seeing the things that you that, that are important that you want to discuss. God just told me to do this with someone else I needed to have a conversation with. He said, write down what you want to discuss. Write it down so you're not just spitting. You're not vomiting. That's what he calls it. You're not vomiting. No, you're actually, you, you're, not, you're not just talking at them. You're speaking to them. That means I've thought about what I'm going to say. And I haven't thought about what I'm going to say from a, I'm going to tell you, you wait till I talk to him. Or oh, you wait, you wait till we have this conversation. You want to meet? Bet. Okay, see, you got the wrong heart. You got the wrong posture. You got the wrong mindset. You, First of all, you're out of order. And God is not in that. I'm telling you, when you write this stuff down, when you take time to sit and write it down and, and, and process it, it's going to show you where you are. And then it's up to you to take that and dictate how you're going to stand. Remember, emotions and feelings, they are indicators of what's going on with us at the current moment. They are not dictators to how we are to move and live as a result. They only say, hey, girl, I'm mad. I'm mad. But they don't say, now because you're mad, go out and punch somebody in the face. No, I'm mad. Now, why? Why am I mad? Why am I feeling like this? Is there anyone else involved? If it is, who is it? What did they do? Like, look at the stuff. Literally, 
interest look at it with a flashlight with a magnifying glass look at it then run to daddy and say daddy now this is what i see this is what's going on with me help me show me me show me them show me the situation now how do we resolve this because a lot of us we going into these conversations and, and it's just us it's just us it's how i feel what i think all it's all about me and you're wrong man you can't do that if you're going to have a conversation with somebody or if you are in connection with somebody you say you love this person how are you not how are you not concerned about what's going on with them that's your whole preface yes i want to say what i want to say but now what 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 do you think how does that make you feel what are your thoughts what's going on with you and don't go in there you know like a preacher this is why I love the way that my pastor is doing church now. We have conversations. She she sits down with us and we she'll she'll say something. She'll give a word or or you know a, a nugget, and then she'll say, "All right, let's talk about it." I love it. When I was at Macedonia over there with Pastor Willie C. Barnes, man, I love me some pastor. When I tell you I love that dude, he will forever be my pastor. He taught me the word. He taught me how to look at that word and dissect that word and break that word. Pastor, Pastor Barnes is one of the reasons why I love Bibles. <laughs> I ain't never said that. Because he taught me how to read it in a way that it wasn't intimidating. Read it in a way that I could understand it and then I can apply it to my life. He taught me how. And guess what I'm learning? The more I read that word, the more that word read me. But then I don't get in all I don't get all in my feelings about it now. I take it back to daddy. Daddy, this is how I'm feeling. I need to talk. Why would we do any differently with that with our relationships? When we write these things down, what I believe it will not only help you to see the things that you need to talk about, not the things you want to talk, because everything you want to talk about doesn't need to be talked about right then, or if at all. <coughs> Excuse me. I believe some of this stuff. Hold on, y'all. I believe some of this stuff that we talk about. I believe some of this stuff that we talk about. We could actually. We don't even actually need it if we take it to God. <clears throat> Thank you. We don't even need it if we take it to God. I believe God will do some stuff in us before we ever even have these conversations. That the conversation or the conversation we thought we had, we were going to have, could even change. If we consult Him. And if we deal with ourselves first. These are all of the things that I wish I had done before I met with my friend on Sunday. <laughs> He's giving them to me right now. <clears throat> Lastly, I heard the Holy Spirit say this, and I'm saying this, and I'm out. When you do that, as you're writing, you remember when I was giving an example about, you know, me? And I was saying, my friend was over there talking to Johnny. I was mad with Johnny, but the, the under root, the, 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 the real reason, the root problem of the issue wasn't I was just mad. The root issue was I felt overlooked. I felt not seen. I felt like he didn't see me because his attention was elsewhere. Guess what that, that is? I felt abandoned. There's a feelings wheel out there. Now, now Coach DB taught me this. David Burrs. If you don't know him, look him up. He's bad. He's an amazing relational coach. David taught me this. DB taught me this. He taught me about that feelings wheel. And as a matter of fact, I'm going to find it and I'm going to print it for myself today. 
That feelings wheel will tell you, you know, it have all these things in this part of the wheel. But then it'll take the wheel out and it'll keep going out and it'll keep going out. And what it does is it'll tell you, you know, like I just said, you know, you're saying I am angry. But then it'll give you some more selections to choose from. Well, why are you angry? And then it'll it'll keep leading you to you to you see like you're angry, but this is why. When I tell you, you'll learn a whole lot about yourself that you never even knew. A lot of times when we have issues or, or things that come up in our relationships, we think something's wrong. Everything is right. If you never have any issues in your relationships, you don't have a real relationship. If, there is, if everything is always right, something is wrong. Nobody's always right. That's why when I would hear men say, I don't want to argue, it would, it would get under my skin so bad. Nobody's trying to argue with you, sir. We're trying to have a conversation. And the more conversations we have, the more we learn how to have healthy conversations, the healthier our relationship would be. But if we keep that mindset of, I don't want to argue, we'll never have the relationship. We'll never have the connection and we'll never have the conversations that we need to or could have because we're already coming in with a defeated mindset. You've got to know that if God has allowed this rift to come, then he, listen, he has an answer on the other side. There's restoration, there's healing, there's victory on the other side. This is why I'm saying this and I mean it. I'm going out. I am a Baptist. Listen, I was born and raised Baptist, so it takes me a while to wrap it up. <laughs> I'm getting better though. In Jesus' name. Jesus said to those disciples, let us go over to the other side. I love this. I love this parable. I love this scripture. But it's not a parable. It's, it actually happened. So this is a this is what took place. He knew a storm was coming, but he didn't say to them, you all meet me over. Y'all meet me over on the other side. He didn't do that. He said, let us go over to the other side. Right? <clears throat> he said, let us go over to the other side because... Hold on, y'all. I'm still, I'm, I'm going to call you right back. I'm still live. You heard me? He said, let us go over to the other. Honey, let me tell you something. My little grandbaby don't play. Listen. Let's go over there. Let us go over there. I'm not going to have you go over there by yourself because I know what's coming. Let us go over there. So when this thing gets shaky, I know they was out there like, oh, my God, the storm is coming out of You know how we do. Somebody, somebody, I don't know who the somebody was. Somebody said, we need to go down here and get Jesus. When they went down there and got Jesus, Jesus was down there sleeping. He wasn't sleeping as if he was saying, man, I don't care nothing about this storm. Y'all better learn how to go to sleep. No, what he was saying was, I'm with you. It is well. Do what I do. But since you're not where I'm at, oh, see how good he is. I, I, man, when I tell you God will give you revelation after revelation after revelation, that's why you can't never look at a scripture and think you know it all. Because he's giving me revelation right now. Jesus was saying, Although you're not where I'm at, I'm not going to rebuke you. I'm going to rebuke this wind. Oh, <laughs> that's good. It's good. He said, I'm not going to get... Jesus didn't get up out of his sleep like, what y'all doing? Y'all ain't uh -huh. He didn't do that. Jesus got up out of his sleep and said, wind and waves, chill. Y'all good? And went back to sleep. That's what I believe that. Let's just see the translation. What he was saying was, I'm not going to rebuke you because I'm here with you all. Are you acting like you don't know that I'm here with you all? He didn't do that. He said, 
Alright. He didn't even address them. He didn't say, y'all don't believe in all of this. If I'm not mistaken, he didn't do any of that. He turned to the wind and the waves, and he rebuked the wind and the waves. He did not rebuke them. Now, that's a whole word. He dealt with that situation. He did not come for them. I heard you. Jesus, did you hear that? He said, and that's what we ought to do. Stop going to the person. Want to rebuke the person. Deal with that situation. Cause that situation to cease. You have authority and power on the inside of you to do that. Oh my God. How did he do it? With the word. He was the word. So when he spoke that, listen, the elements, listen. God says you are the word. You know the word. You're made in my likeness and in my image. Speak the word. Let the word do the work. You try to do the work. Let the word do the work. Got to go. Got to go. Got to go. Got to go. I love y'all. I hope you got something today. Look, you want to be back on Friday. It's going down. I'm telling you, it's going down. These conversations are getting better and better and richer and richer. Oh, it's good. Come back Friday. I'm telling y'all, I need to get on at 745 so we can move this thing. We can move this thing. All right. Meet me on here at 745, y'all. That's the goal. 8 o'clock is too late. It's too late. All right? Get on up. Y'all set your clock for everything else. Get on up. Get on up. Get on up. Let's get this word. All right? Let's have these conversations so we can be healthier. We can be wiser. And we can be better. All right? All right. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May he make his face to shine upon you and give you his peace. May he be gracious to you. I pray that God will cover, keep, and protect you and your family. And I pray that this word will not only just come in your ear, but it will penetrate your heart so much so it will move you to action. I want you to go back and write these nuggets down. Write them down. Sharon, my sister, is amazing. She's amazing at pinning things. She has pinned these things down. Either her or my daughter Shari or my other bonus daughter uh, Shanti, they would usually do it. Somebody's always putting the nuggets in there for you to go back and look at. Listen, go back and get these nuggets because that's how it shows that you're really serious about it. You're not going to remember all this stuff. Write it down and then ask the Holy Spirit to help you execute it in your life so you can see your relationships grow. And I promise you, it's going to start with you. Once you grow, everything else around you, it's going to grow too. All right, I love you. I'll see y'all on Friday. Bye.